Um, I'd like to start the facility committee meeting this morning and welcome our guest here. Um, I need approval of the agenda. So long. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, I didn't receive any public comments on this meeting. No, thank you. So we are, oh, before we approve that agenda, we are going to change the agenda. Oh. Don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to move softball first. The last two items, yeah. So 6B and C. You guys are amenable to that, but we'll do that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. All right. Well, Rob, you're welcome to come on up and I'm going to give you an intro and then we can kind of talk through kind of what some of you know, the, the boosters that have come forward with. Um, as the board's aware, we've had softball lighting project on our agenda here for quite a while as a conversation piece. Now with uh, the referendum and some of the other items around our, our Title IX discussions that we've decided we were going to move forward with, uh, with a, a planning process for that. Um, Steve has worked with um, with Rutler Corp to work on a plan for how to put the lights onto the current varsity field. He has that um, completed. Um, that would be something that we could move ahead with um, right away. Um, but a couple of things have come up with regards to that. One was some feedback we received from, from the, um, the, our boosters that with regards to some of the investments that they were looking at in the field. And just asking the question with regards to is this the is this the right field to put the lights on or should we consider kind of a longer term vision and put the lights on the JV field? I mean that's something that um, Steve, Aaron, and I have had some conversations about. It does make some sense when you look at it from a long term perspective, but there's definitely some other improvements that would need to be made over time, press box, etc., to do that. Um, but there's that that's been a conversation piece. So couple of things that, that we have as kind of options and I was kind of have Rob kind of share some of the things that some of the boosters have shared with with regards to that is we don't have a pressing time frame for the lights right now I mean because we're not going to get them in place for the spring season so it's a matter of we do have the luxury of time over summer and in the fall if we needed to delay this to look at a few things a couple of things that Steve and I have have discussed is um, seeing if the, if the board would be amenable for us to do a study of both fields to determine which one would be the best um, and have Rutler kind of go through, assess where those are, take a look at kind of what the lighting project would look like in both, and then also look at the conditions of the field to make sure um, that, that that if we made that decision, it wasn't just a snap decision, but something that had some some backing and, and rationale behind it. Um, but that that's kind of where we land. I mean, Rob, you guys, we've had some conversations with the boosters. Just, just quickly in one of our board meetings, uh, we were talking about what improvements we wanted to make on each field. You know, we were talking about field leveling, you know, for the longest time on both fields, and then it got into new batting cages and upgrading the batting cages. And then we're talking about why are we going to do all this work, let's say, on one field if we felt like the light should have always been on the JV field just because there's parking lot there for a lot of people can park in. And we heard, you know, rumors that, you know, there was neighbors that didn't like the lights going up on the varsity field. So we didn't know if that was going to be prolonged, the lights getting on that field, you know, in the future. So I'm like, we were just talking about let's put the lights on the JV field and make improvements there. And through the last couple of years with me talking about field leveling at both fields, I think the JV field's in better shape right now in place than the varsity field. You know, both fields need to be improved on it, but you know, that was our thoughts going into this. So that was just kind of a high end discussion that we had on where the lights should be. So, what you have in front of you is actually kind of the, the look at what the lighting project could look like as Steve and I have kind of taken a step back from that. I think our recommendation would shift at this point to. To say let's just let's not approve that right now and let's take a little bit of time to study that both of the fields we could work with um Rutler Corp to do that. And and, and a, a related item that we'd also like to include in that consideration is when we've talked with um, softball and then adjacently with soccer in the, in the past, there was the conversation about like the team center. And that team center was a soccer piece that would have gone along the edge of the soccer field, but it would have had adjacency to the uh, softball field. Um, there's been interest from the soccer folks to continue that conversation, but we kind of pushed that off at this point. But what we, what Steve and I would like to take a look at is we currently have a, um, 
a building on the site, we have the soccer concession stand building. We'd like if we're going to have Rattler kind of take a look at both of these um, fields as, as an assessment. We'd also like them to take a look at what the adjacencies are around the current building we have up between where the concessions are for soccer to see is there any ability for us to sort of adding another structure to our to our site to adding something on or creating something in that space. Um, I think we need to have that answered before we can ever answer a future question about um, whether we want to add another structure. But I guess as we kind of look at the, the lights piece assessment of those fields while we have people on site, we'd like to also take a look at is there any is to do an assessment kind of of the site around that building and that building itself to just see is there any sense to be investing in that space and is there ability to do that. That's kind of, I guess, what we're asking for this morning, a little bit different than I think where we thought we might be um, initially. But I just wanted to get some feedback from the committee on that. I mean, if there's interest in putting, putting the lights on the JV field, it seems, I mean, conception seems to make more sense if they're there, really, location wise, and getting the same kind of feedback that we had in terms of potentially the lighting being a problem with the residents there. So I know that we got clearance from the air airfield or at least they did that layout so that we made that work but um i i mean i'd like <clears throat> i'd definitely like to think about that going forward that makes sense to look into that as possible all right i think so i would like to be better we keep moving ahead as quickly as we can just to get those lights out of there it's, I, I don't think this delays it much at all it, it, it's not going to impact this this seniors see this final this this season the spring but it's going to um definitely something we can get done this summer and fall i believe through my conversations with steve are you so, looking at the building and reassessing that or assessing it is the scope of that building changing at all um, um, possibly i mean i know i know we've had some issues with just the um the water pieces up there that you heard about this this last year in the, in the fall I think we'd like to take a look at that. We'd also like to look at um, just is that is there space there to put if you wanted to have a shelter place there or, or a place for, for the players to be or the um, would that be an option for us to utilize a building we already have in existence and to see if we either repurpose parts of it or if we can add on to it. And right now I don't have answers to either of those. So before we kind of dive into some of the other broader pictures, I think that might be a good question to get answered. So we have that option. So. I guess my thought would be to have was would be to bring forward a proposal to um, assess both of the, the diversity and the JV softball fields with the set with the assessment of lights and then conditions, and then also axillarily look at the building um, that we have the, the concessions building right now just to see kind of what options we have with that. Yeah, and I think an important voice would be Aaron's successor in this process right. and the softball coach. Yep. So as well. So. Um, yeah, if you're going to change fields, I think it needs to be put on hold. There's going to be a lot more things that are pop right. up when you change a field like that. So. Right. Absolutely. So I guess what I'd ask, if you're comfortable with that, I think we can put kind of a more formal kind of thought process to that and probably bring that to the to the board so everybody's aware of that. So if you're comfortable with that kind of general concept, um, I'd entertain um, at least you approving that concept that we can then bring forward to the board for consideration so you know kind of where we're at. So we can um, look at the feasibility of moving lights over and reassessing that. All in favor, say aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The next one is one that I'm going to turn this over to Rob. This is a booster's request for an indoor batting cage. Uh, yeah. So Sean Meyer, who's our current um, board treasurer, softball board treasurer, used to be the youth board or the youth treasurer. And there's still six or $7,000 in that youth account that's been sitting there since our girls were youth age or whatever, four or five years ago. So Sean still has that account or still has a checkbook for that account. So we're like, if it's sitting there, let's use it. And what we had come up with was let's spend that money and donate a indoor batting cage to the intermediate school. So that one's being tossed around of how do we go about doing that? How do we get approval for that? What cost for that? And who does that work? So that was 
line here, I guess, today to see if we can do that. If we can do it, probably go a lot more. Right. Is it, Rob, is that something that there's a, you have an idea of what you'd like to purchase, or it's kind of just a broader picture of you'd like to bring in the batting kit? Because there's always things we have to do that. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it costs, and that it costs more than what's in that account. I think our current account with the varsity or the softball board, we can uh, use some of that money. So we have, we don't know if it's a five thousand dollar cage, ten thousand dollar cage, but it's one of the cages that dropped down to the, the ceiling. Right, and all that. It's two of them. Being here. Yeah. So I think. Yeah. Aaron, have you had any conversations with regards to that or with, with conversations with John at all? Family? No, this is, I mean, that email is a person. Uh, yeah, I think that the process for doing that, Rob, would be for us. I, mean, I think that generally, I think, at least I'm amenable to it. I mean, as far as how that would fit, it's really a question of how it fits within that facility and then what that would, it would take for it to be then suspended and, and kind of planned out for where that would go. So I think the first piece would be is probably working with Aaron and with um, John Kramer. And I know, John, you're on the line here. To, Good morning. I, and to kind of assess kind of how and where a batting cage would go. And you're looking at the intermediate school. Is that right, Ron? Right. Yep. Um, so I think that would be the first piece. Right. Obviously, you're trying to get that done as soon as possible is, is my is my guess. I'm not sure what the lead time in it is on. Well, I mean, if it doesn't happen this spring, then we'll just pass it on to the next two years. All right. All right. I mean, our complete board is senior parents right now. So, yeah. Um, but if that's, yeah, we'd, we'd like to do it this spring if we can at least purchase it. And whether when it gets installed, that's the different issue and topic, I guess. Okay. So. Part of that, you probably want to look at floor protection, right? right. So it'd be an added. Yeah, there's a few more ancillary pieces to it. Then mm -hmm. I would, I think that's right. We would that, have some of those at the other buildings. But you right. currently practice at the intermediate. No, but it'd be a place to go to. If, let's say these halls, you know, the field halls, and we can't access those cages for the girls, and that's another place to go to during the winter. I think the next step is probably to work with Aaron and 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 with John. Does that makes sense, Aaron. Yeah. And kind of get and then and I think that's a that's a good question as far as then how that would work with the scheduling piece and if that's the right location for it. Then we can take a look at. Then I would say we just bring that back to here once we have more kind of specifics as far as where it would go, what it would entail, you know, about where the funding is going to come from, and then some of the questions like Brian said as far as any other sort of protections for that space. Is there currently one in the middle school yet? Yeah. No, there's one at the high school. Is that the there's, two, there's two in the high school with field house. <clears throat> it's the only place we have cages. Um, we had a setup. We had an old uh, tension one in the old gym that predates me. It was never used as long as I've been here. Um, that one stopped being, for whatever reason, they stopped putting that up, stopped using it. I, Spencer would probably know why that right. stopped being used, but it used to be. You can still see the wall anchors if you ever go look in the old gym and you would have to pull it out and push it all the way back in. I think part of the reason that stopped being used was when gymnastics moved from heritage to the old gym. You couldn't, that space got taken up then by the storage of their, their equipment. Right. Brian, like why the intermediate school? I, I was just going to say, we're not a full school in the middle school. I guess maybe we didn't know if there was one in there or not, but um, just being a youth program, I guess we can go to the other school, I guess. I think that would be an assessment that we would do as part of it, as where does it make the most sense? And then see which facility would support it the best. So I think the, the process would be to kind of go back with, with Aaron and with John. And, and Aaron, can you help kind of lead that mm -hmm. process too and get that moving as soon as possible? Then we'll get it back in front of um, either our committee or the board. Once, once we have kind of more specifics on it. Everybody at this table yeah, comfortable with that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Do we need a motion in this or not? No, not yet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Thanks, John. Rob. Um, back to the top. Um, 
I don't think we have anybody here for the bids, but Roxanne is here for the athletic field. So we want to use her time. So the athletic field is next. Um, yes, that would be the one with the Warrior Stadium project. Okay. So Roxanne, I'll have you come. You can come sit at the table here. Those of you who don't know, this is Roxanne Johnson. She's uh, um, our civil engineer who also is a resident of Wanakee here, etc. Yep. Um, very involved person in our community. So we're great to have, we're fortunate to have her working on this project with us. Um, this is really the, the conversation with regards to the work that we'd like to do at Warrior Stadium. This includes the things like the, the bleacher extension and the track replacement. Um, Steve and Roxanne have been working on this um, considerably here for the last number of weeks. I'm trying to just get a sense of our timing of this. Um, and can we get this accomplished this summer? And then the process that that would need to follow in order for that to occur. I think our interest is, is, is to try to make it happen this summer. We think that would be in the best interest of the district and our people who use those facilities. Um, there has been a meeting that Steve has led with the track coach, the football folks, et cetera as far as our timing, as far as when this would go, because that impacts a lot of people, because there's a lot of things that happen in that space over the summer, much of which are already planned and scheduled. So not wanting to disrupt that, there has been a window identified um, where this could take place, um, which is amenable to all of the, the coaches that are that would be there and would be need to be completed by July 31st, because I think we have our, our football folks are coming in on, on August 1st. So there is a window for this to, to occur, but in order for that to happen, there has to be a few different, a few kind of alternative processes that we want to share with you today. Um, see if you're comfortable with for us to be able to move forward and make that happen. So Roxanne's here, she's put a considerable amount of work in on this. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Roxanne, just kind of walk through kind of where we're at, some of the things that you're finding, and really how we could move forward to make this happen this summer. So there was an issue with the track and the markings and the quality. And Fisher Tracks looked at it and kind of assessed it and um, said that they didn't know if that curve going around the athletic field was put in wrong. We, we didn't really know why the striping was over the curb and lanes uneven and um and potentially the fencing being not a meter from the lane which is a safety hazard so we did a survey we surveyed the existing track and the curb and luckily the curb was installed correctly and the field doesn't have to be modified just the track so then um the fencing also was with, based on the survey within the meter in some areas. So we laid out a plan for reconstructing the track, ripping out the asphalt, milling it off, you know, regrading, placing new asphalt and a new track surface, and then restriping. And then also moving that fence out so that you had the minimum clearance. And then we also looked at the bleacher stanchion kind of that's been um, going back and forth for years. And and they that layout that we currently have um, avoids existing light poles, you know, just works well with what's there. So there's really like three projects going on. One is reconstructing the track. One is moving the fencing. And the third is the bleacher expansion. So I have been working with two track companies on getting estimates for reconstructing the track. And then also with two fencing companies to get an estimate for, for removing and replacing the fence. And then the bleachers, there's really one choice because you, you don't want to we're going with the same company that did the existing bleachers. And so for structural integrity, you want to use the same company. So I got those estimates and, you know, it's up there. Um, so I feel like the two track est estimates were really close um, and the two fencing estimates were really close. So I feel like we have good numbers on both of those. And then the third estimate on the bleachers I mean, it kind of is what it is because it's that that company we have to go with. 
So to move forward then, um, you know, you would work, is it, is it cooperative purchasing agreement? I think it's called, you could either, based on the estimates and how close they were, you could, you could pick the, the track construction company and you could pick the fencing company and hire them and the bleacher, it'd be like three different contracts. Um, or you could wait, put together bid documents, send it out to bid formally and do it next year. So that's kind of the choice where we're at right now. So that's what we need to decide today. Yeah. So our, our <laughs> traditional process is that we would put this out for um, very specific bids. We'd be bringing those bids back through then our process here through facilities committee and the board. Um, and that process is just as far as the steps involved. Um, we just don't have time to accomplish in order to get the project done for the summer. This year, right. But we could do that for fall of 24. Right. The alternative piece here is for the board to give up, to give administration kind of a not to exceed number. We, we, we threw out the number of 1.2 million based off of just what the projections are that Roxanne has worked on here for all of that project. And then what we would do is we would continue to work with Roxanne. There actually would be um, more harder numbers coming from these vendors and that administration would have the ability to then choose the ones that, that best fit our project and our costs. So that's actually what we're ask, asking the board for consideration as we think they're devaluing getting this done this summer. It just requires a little bit different process. It's not a lack of a bid process. It's just an alternative bid process that gives us some of the authority to grant some of those contracts based on a not to exceed number. But some of the work that Roxanne will be doing with Steve and Allie would absolutely be through, through some of the bids on what, what this work would be. What part of the fence is falls within the meter? Is it, is it, is it, is it, are the bleachers too close to the track or is it the other side or so, corners? So the, um, I'm gonna pull the other time. Along the bleach, along the main bleachers, it's, it's okay. And then you'd start doing the corners and, and it, and it comes in. And what I, what I'm thinking is you, it's a four foot fence. You just replace the whole four foot fence with black coated. I, you know, you could just go with the galvanized again, but you know, it Black wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter. You would have the outside fence still be galvanized at the end, or you could just do galvanized. But I mean, it kind, of, you know, it's it's the original fence. So is, it, I, yeah. is there room to make it to go back farther than just the well, minimum? I'm, I'm going to go four feet, so it's three point two eight. Right. But you know, <laughs> why? Cut it that close, so we're going to push it out a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, some factors not in that cost that um, we're considering is depending on stormwater management timing and all the extra. You know, these are kind of alternate, but you could pay up and pass the fence maybe by six inches, so you have grass that you don't have to mow on the inside. But I. I don't know if I can get that to work with stormwater and whatnot. So I don't know if that we're really going to do that yet or not. And then also we are looking at a path on the west side right here. The west side is the third, and then possibly the east side, maybe one, maybe both of them, or maybe that's just a project down the road to get from you know, the main bleacher area over to the visitor bleachers. So that's why that that cost you just saw was low because there's there's other things that they might want to do. I just those things I don't know with the timing if that that's that, that's that's a whole different story. But I did talk to um the village and they thought the track reconstruction and the fencing you didn't you don't need permitting possibly erosion control, depending on what we do, if we go outside that track or not. The bleachers, they did say, need to go through plan commission. So that's where I am right now. 
So one of the things that the last time we did the track, we did not redo the asphalt underneath that we just did the, the surface piece to it. So that was something we knew that we would most likely have to do the next time we came in here to touch the track. So that this is really a complete redo of the track, starting with the base, building it all the way up. So, so they'll, re, they'll remove the asphalt and then they'll, they'll roll, roll test the subgrade just to make sure it's firm and you don't have areas of undercut well in there or whatever, or you do undercut any bad areas that you don't have good compaction on and go back. Place the asphalt, it's got a cure for 28 days. This whole thing is really time sensitive. So, the, so they, they've got to do that work. They got to place the asphalt. It's got to sit for 28 days. Then they can put the track surfacing on. And then that's got to sit for seven to 10 days. So there, there will be striping will happen in August. I don't know. Um, it just has to, but that striping takes like one or two days and you can, you can be on it the next day. So it's, it's the, it's really the paving that's critical. And then the surfacing takes some time too. And that window between the two. So, but we've been working with everybody's schedules and <laughs> hope that we get it. Working. Sorry, Roxanne. Do the companies that you've talked to do they provide a guarantee for the integrity of the surface? And and we can ask for like a guarantee. I I ask for um them to do kind of like ISO certification because so the way I understand it is they will remove the surface. Well, they're a certified track builder by the American Sports Builders Association. So they are, the two that we're using are certified. And then for the guarantee part, like we can work on that with their contract, I think, when, when, before we sign a contract. Yeah. But the way I understand it is the paving contractor will remove the asphalt, they'll have a surveyor, make sure the grades are proper, then they'll pave it, they'll, they'll survey it again. And then the, the track people will come in and do the surfacing um, and striping and certify it again. So we're having like multiple checks down the line. So, and I'm not sure, yeah, I'm guessing if the other one was never, it was not an as well on it or checked, right? Cause it's uneven, I would have been right. And then she went, yeah. Okay. And, and the, 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 the... The, the group that did the last one is not going to invite them to do no, this process. Right. So this is all new, different track folks to do this. But. The previous time, we did not, we we had identified there were some issues with the under plane, but we we just didn't have the dollars to address it. So we knew just doing a recoat kind of would get us a few years on it, but would at some point we were going to have to address the under, the sub base, which is as far as myself, John, I think John looked back in the records. That's original to when the stadium was built. So it's been there 40 some years. So it's we've definitely gotten our life out of it, life use out of it. Right. Yeah, it's the original from um, yeah. like 25 years old, I think, or so, so the feedback we need from the committee is either are you comfortable with the process that we've laid out that for us to get it accomplished this summer, which would be proving a not to exceed number for us administratively, then to continue to work with Roxanne on finalizing those those bids and those contracts. Um, if you're not comfortable with that, um, then it would have to be kind of postponed a year so we could go through more of the, the, the bid process that would come back through just as we're approving bids for the for the school for this. I mean, the time sensitive stuff here is the track and the fencing and the bleacher really isn't. Is there some sort of efficiency in the disruption that all take place at the same time. That's what we're looking at, right? Is it, while we're in that site, let's and we're we're having to do work there. Let's do it all at the same time. And right. indicate there's really only one bleacher manufacturer that you're dealing with. Right. What's the uh, urgency on the bleachers? Does it allow us to host more regionals or uh, games would, or? No, I would say. A lot of it is what Randy mentioned. If we're in that space, we might as well do all the disruption at once. The biggest thing is with the bleacher addition, we can take the bleachers off the track and put the band back into the bleachers. Okay. And that just lessens the 
the overall wearing on that for on that that's part the, of the track. That's the big urgency. There's just no room right now when you go to those larger events there, and particularly in the fall when we get our band out there, which is just what we want. They're on separate bleachers that we're having to put on the track, and I, I don't want to put stuff on. That and track. you know, on top of that, I spent about seventy five hundred dollars this year in bleacher rentals. Yeah, one day. Um, so that would, you know, after a while, that that cost is going to exceed what it is to install those bleachers. So, so this gives us seating for another five hundred. I think is what I saw. So back to the things that you you're like looking at putting in the asphalt, maybe all the way out is that you don't even know we can do that yet but if we go with the go ahead is that i mean you're still looking at that as a possibility and doing if it works out and then works into the net to see the same as i would say right. so and those and are some of the timing. things that we're looking to vet out and, and with some of the vendors yeah so one of the things we talked about in our meeting was that so last week right once oh, yeah. um one of the things just from um uh, a site management is we don't have uh, a path to the visitor side. So when we have visiting fans that maybe have mobility issues or in a wheelchair and a walker, um, it, it's extremely difficult to get them around. Um, we have to bring them onto the track, which uh, then leads the rest of our visiting fans to think that they can walk in the track, which of course presents a security and safety issue risk. Um, and then if we just get bad weather for a week, even uh, people that don't have mobility issues now they're walking through mud to get over there. It's just not a, uh, uh, you know, if we're trying to have a top-notch site, we should have some kind of simple ADA path mm -hmm. to get around there. So is there a ramp is, on the visitor side? There is. There is an ADA ramp over there, and that's why we kind of want. We were thinking we put it on the west side because we go right to the current ramp to get onto the into the bleachers. And the is is there space in the front rows? Is there like a setback of yep. seats so they can? Yeah, the bleachers themselves are all ADA um, compliant, but we just be nice to have that path there mm -hmm. to keep people so that you can truly secure that interior game field when we have when we're bringing in te teams like Middleton and, and DeForest and we're having two or three thousand people in there to keep them. They don't think they can just welcome them to come Well, you know, so, so I saw so and so walking across it with their, with their you know, grandmother. Well, that's different. So, yeah. So we have a we have so, projection cost right now just over a million dollars. Steve put in here 1.2. I think the 1.2 was to cover some of the extra things. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. So things like that. So that's what we're asking for is we think it'd be in the best interest to try to get this done in the summer since we have a window to do it. Um, but it's going to require a little bit different process and for you to kind of allocate some of that decision making, final decision making to us administratively. One of the okay. things, and I think we're still finalizing some of the calendar dates on it too, that I just want to be aware of. Um, you know, we are having some talks with Madison Country Day and potentially having to have maybe my track might go over there to practice that last week. One of the other things is in order to get it to fit in sort of our time schedule, some of our date timeline is we may have to look at playing, if we get home across playoff games, potentially those may have to be played either at the other team site or at the intermediate site. So, uh, the issue there is we don't know if we're a host until the week before you know, those games. So it's hard to wait on that planning you know, to tell to ask Roxanne and those companies to hold up on their timeline um, until we know, because we're just it's going to be too late to then actually affect this that, this project. Yeah, I don't think you can avoid it with a major project like this. Yeah, you're going to have some be. that are going to have to go somewhere else, regardless of what year you do it. Yeah, yeah. 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 I just want to make sure that we're going to try and do our <laughs> best, but there are going to be groups that are going to get squeezed out of their. What they've come to know as their traditional spaces. Is this going to be funded out of referendum money or? Yeah. So whether plays like the five or two, I mean, right, and that's why if you could start earlier, I mean, sure, if it's perfect, right? But if if we can open yeah. it up sooner, that would help. Sure. Roxanne, do you feel that there's adequate time to? Do the additional investigation you talked about, like the 
asphalt under the fence and uh, a new path. And I don't want to rush a project and then not do it to the best we want. Right. Yeah, I, I think there's 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 time to for me to look at it and to look at the stormwater and see, you know, are you gonna have to build another pond? Are you, you know, mm -hmm. and, and there, there's gonna be choices to be made, or can we do um so here here's here's the the deal. The paver can pave in eight foot widths. So you know you either do that path on the outside in concrete or you pay the eight feet, which adds more impervious and yeah. gets into the stormwater thing. And then the the track, you know, looking at that four foot extension. Um, you know, there's 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 parts where it's just it's really tight and you get around the corner and by the book. I mean, it's you you've got clearances from your, you know, your your jumping zones or whatever. So so you're trying to squeeze in between the fence and that and this. And so um, you know, I'm just getting, I'm gonna get way too technical, but then I look at like, oh having an asphalt path right next to the fence in parts and then maybe flipping that paper to the other side mm -hmm. to do the eight foot strip mm -hmm. you know and maybe it's a it's and this is more of like a paving this is a stormwater timing paving thing because when they mill off that track they can probably do it in a day right and then they roll test it and they can pay they can be in and out of there probably in a week now, if you're saying, oh, well, we want you to go out to the fence, another four feet, remove it all. First of all, the fence has got to be down first. Then you got to rip off the topsoil, grade down to subgrade, proof roll that. You know, like it's a much bigger deal than just milling off the surface and, and placing. And so that's kind of, you know, I think it would be in the paver. The paving company they they would rather have me stay away from the fence on the track with my new path right mm -hmm. and but there are just simple areas where it's just going to be tough to do mm -hmm. and 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 that's where you know due to timing whatever can we just work and get these tight areas and then i break off of my path you know separate from the track and you know this whole paving to the fence line it hasn't been an issue, mm -hmm. you know. It's not like it's a huge maintenance. It's, it's it wasn't even on anybody's radar. So then I'm kind of like, why are we mm -hmm. adding impervious, complicating thing, adding to the stormwater problem when we really it really hasn't been a problem. Mm -hmm. So I'm not even sure that we want to do that. We, you know, I just brought this up at the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> the first even heard of it, and then I'm like, well, I better just put in money just just in case, you know. And I want to, you know. So I think I think that I need to work, you know, just with the school district more on that. And I think it's going to come down to budget, stormwater, timing, et cetera. I don't think it's a must-have. It hasn't been a problem in the past. So I'm kind of sorry I even threw it up there. <laughs> you know, no, no. it's brought up to me. So I, you know, I just want to do it the best we yeah. can for the future. And right. I don't yeah. want to rush it just to get it done. Yeah. And, and talking to Steve and this conversation with Brett, and we don't feel like we would be rough with getting those decisions made. It just requires us to kind of go through this ultimate bid process and delegate some things off to us to work with Roxanne to get that to happen. So if the committee is comfortable with that, then I would just ask that we would recommend that to the full board and we'll bring that on Monday. If you prefer the other route, which is delays of the year, um, we can bring that to you. I'm comfortable with moving forward for not to exceed one point three one. Yeah, I'm bringing it up to the full board. Okay. Do so I make a motion? Or is that is a recommendation from the committee. Are you okay? You. I made that motion. So. All right, second. All in favor, say aye. 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 aye.
Thank you, Rob. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Explanation. Thank you. We're going backwards on our agenda. We are going backwards. Now we're going <laughs> to do the. Thanks. For that. Thanks for... <laughs> <laughs> I just got to make sure I don't miss anything, Ellie. That is just our job. So we are now back to the uh, bids on the fire protection and elevators. And I think the last time that Vogel Brothers. Oh, we here. didn't have those in our. Yes, those just those that were not there. So those, those are new, and I think that's what Steve had in the notes here was that those would be brought forward here. So we had two different items that Vogel has identified as needing to move forward sooner than later based on lead terms. One of them was the fire protection, and then the elevator. I think what you have up right now is the elevator. Um, just as kind of a indication, the item off to the right here, where it says Vogel Brothers, I believe that was kind of what there. Budget. That's their budget number. That's kind of how they've articulated this. And then you have four different bids there from Otis Schindler, um, Dyson Krupp, and Cohen. Um, and you can see the numbers across the bottom with regards to that. Now, John, have you been part of any of these discussions with regards to any of the bids? Um, I haven't heard any concerns from Steve or from Vogel with regards to any of the any of the bid items. Yeah, yeah, Randy, not as far as the bidding process with Vogel on these. No, I haven't. Right. I'm assuming the Otis is they just gave you a flat bid for two elevators. Right. So I'll make a motion to go with the lowest Otis. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 You got that, Rebecca? Yeah. And then we'll do the same thing for fire protection. Um, thank you. You can see where the um, budget is off on the right under the Vogel number, the 456-120. Um, and then you can see that there's, we have five different bids on this. The low bid is 1901. Mm -hmm. And again, I think that I have, I think all of these are viable contractors for us to do the work. Yeah, make a bid to go with 1901 or a motion. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to bid it too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all in favor of 1901 say aye. 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 Those were the only two that we had for today. I just got to make sure I didn't skip anything in the agenda. Oh, maintenance planning at the very end. Uh, this is just. Uh, so this, this isn't an action item, is it? I think no, this one's your budget. Back from the last yeah, this was kind of back from the last meeting. This was with regards to what we do. If you recall back from the 2014 referendum, we had $300,000 that was specific from the um, exceed the cap number to go directly into our Fund 10 facility maintenance budget. And what we're recommending at this point, what we, what we took through the budget committee was um, over the course of the referendum, the referendum funds that we have allocated for facilities, facility maintenance, um, to utilize those for our facility maintenance needs um, for now through the through the end of the referendum funds being available. That would allow us then to then take the three hundred thousand dollars that we receive every year from that previous referendum and just build up a fund balance within that account, so that eventually it builds up to I think it's one point eight million dollars over the course of, the, of that time period. Then when we come to the end of the referendum funds being available, then we will have opportunities to have an additional funds that we can then utilize as, as we need for, for additional maintenance. Now, if you recall in the referendum, I believe we had $6 million in the, in the general referendum number for maintenance, and then anything that we're able to capture through unused contingency. Plus we then have the option with any of the dollars that we receive uh, investment income on um, or interest payments, which um, comes to a significant amount of money. Is that like $4 million set out? Yeah, in there? Yeah. yeah. So there's going to be a lot of opportunity for us to be able to address some of the facility maintenance needs. So our recommendation right now is to build up that fund 10 fund balance with the 300,000 each year, and then utilize the referendum funds for our ongoing maintenance pieces that we have over the course of the referendum. 
And we would share that with the budget committee, which was comfortable with that. But we wanted to bring that here as well. I think that was, there's no low with me down that I don't believe. I'm just not why I asked. Sense. That comes to the end. That's it. So motion to reject. Second that. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.